All right, uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we want to show you the poultry structure we have here in Ogun State and the birds we just brought in. So we're going to show you the entire structure. It's demarcated into three parts. Uh, we have three different compartments. So we're using one compartment strictly for breeding, for brooding. When we brood from the first compartment, then we spread them across to the other compartments in order to maintain adequate stocking density. So this structure you see here is for the broilers. We can use it for broiler or for pullets. We can raise the day hold pullets till their point of lay. Then we'll move them to the next structure. So the structure we have here is for the layers. So we're going to bring in cages. We are still working on this. We are we just have a few finishing touches to do with this structure. So when we bring in the cages, the plan is to brood the birds here, raise them from day hold to uh, 16 weeks. Then we move them to the layer house. And when we move them to the layer house, the birds are going to lay here for 52 weeks. They will begin laying from 20 weeks. From 20 weeks to 52 weeks, they will continue laying. So that period they will be here and laying, we will begin again with our broiler production. So for now we have broilers that we have just brought in. After this cycle of broilers for the December period, we'll be installing the cages before December. So once this cycle of broilers are out, the next birds we'll be bringing in here are the day old pullets. So we'll raise them here for 16 weeks, then we'll move them to the cages, by which time the cages would have been ready. So it is best for you to grow your birds from day old because uh, having birds as point of lay, you don't know the history of those birds, except, except there is no way around it. That's when we tell you to go with point of lay. Because when you don't know the history of the birds and you just bring them in, uh, whatever they tell you, you get the birds and you start having issues with those birds. But when you raise the birds from day old to uh, cage size or point of lay, you know the history of the birds, you know what and what you're giving them. Of course, all the vaccines, all the drugs, you're following it routinely. So you know you're having healthy birds. But getting at point of lay is risky. I'm not saying you would not get good birds point of lay. We also supply good point of lay. But uh, as an animal scientist and a professional, I will always advise you grow your birds from day old to table size and put them in the cages. But if you don't have the uh, resources to build a, a, a deep litter house and a battery cage house then you can just go ahead and build the battery cage house and bring in a uh, good point of lay of which we can also supply you but the advice is always to have your birds read from day hold if you have the resources to do that so we're going to take you into the buddha house you can see it is completely sealed and hair tight though we have some level of ventilation going inside but at this period the birds require lots of heat in order to maintain their body system so that's why we have sealed up the environment uh, so we'll take you inside so you see what we have of course you must have a foot deep at the front of your uh, poultry house so you get in we have water and a disinfectant inside then you move in so um we have light at night here. Uh, it's still evening and it's still quite uh, warm. So that's why we've not put on the electricity bulbs. So you can see the electricity bulbs. We have two lines of them. So when we put the light here, it's really bright. So these are the brooders. You can see we have 3,000 broilers here. We have them here, the drinkers and the tree feeders. Yeah, someone would want to ask why use adult drinkers. I try as much as possible to break, uh, bring down cost of production. And for a good number of years, I've been doing this, getting the uh, uh, big feeders to start the day old birds. We've not had casualty as a result of using our big uh, feed, uh, sorry, drinkers. So why get the small drinkers when after a period you will almost not need them? but this you would need from start to finish there's no arm getting the small drinkers i also get them when the uh, need arises but when a client begins to complain of the cost of production probably after construction of the farm 
he or she now figures out that the budgeted uh, amount of money has been shortened, then you have to devise means to help to cut down on cost for such type of crimes. So that's the case with what we've done here. We're trying to break down the, uh, reduce the cost because of course we've seen the facility is massive and the amount of money that has gone in is already, already huge. So instead of getting uh, the fountain feed uh, drinkers, we just opted to get the uh, adult drinkers. So from here, they will graduate and grow with them. So uh, we're just trying to make you understand so you don't think we don't know what we are doing. Why are we using adult drinkers for the old chicks? So it's all in trying to bring down the cost for the client because uh, he or she as I wouldn't want to reveal the gender, I feel a lot of money has gone in and uh, pleaded if there's anywhere we can make some adjustments and that's why we've done that. So as you can see, the beds arrived not too long ago. We still have the cartons here. It's just one day old. They came in yesterday, so we still have them here. As you can see, they are evenly distributed. This is to tell you that the, the uh, temperature is adequate for the birds. Now, when it is very cold for them, you will see them clustering around the source of heat or huddling together. But you can see they are evenly distributed within the brooder. So it tells you the temperature, humidity, and other conditions like ventilation are adequate. But should in case you see them running away from the source of heat, uh, from the cold pots, then it means that the environment is too hot or the brooder is too hot for them so you reduce the level of uh, heat there but as you can see they are uniformly distributed within the uh, brooders so it tells you that we are still in good stead with the uh, weather conditions right now so we don't need to do anything though the temperature is dropping gradually after now we light up the uh, cold pots especially in the night that's when we need the cold pots so it will reduce the cost on fuel so this is what we have it's just the same thing everywhere uh, we have the coal pots the tree feeders and also the uh, adult feeders and we told you why we're using that and also the feed was produced by me uh, of course you would have seen some of my videos on feed meal and feed production as an animal scientist i also possess the skill of producing feed in order to cut down on cost for my clients and also balance the nutritional requirements of the feed because some of these commercial feeds we buy are not really balanced especially during the festive period where there is so much rush for uh, birds and feeds and companies may not be able to meet up with the demand and as a result a lot of feeds you are feeding your birds are shafts so it's best you produce your feed if you have the capacity and the resources and that will give you the advantage of having healthy beds and birds that will grow very fast and also the cost of production will be greatly reduced so this is what we have here you can see this is the whole of our brooder so after about a week or two or probably more when we think that the brooders have become too small for the uh, number of birds we will reopen all the uh, brooders and spread them around the entire structure because you can see spaces in between that will still need to be occupied so we'll reduce we'll remove all these surrounds and spread them around now after doing that this place is still not fit for 3,000 birds we have the stipulated uh, stocking density for this hall so at a stage probably by four or five weeks we'll move some of the beds to the next part so we're just going to walk you through the other halls that are open but we don't have anything there so this is where we're doing the brooding so we'll show you the other two uh, alts. So because of the brooding, you can see we seal this part up. And then the second part of it is open. So we have one door here. We have another door there. They are still working on the foot deep here. So we have water should in case there's emergency need for water here. We can just get it from here. So this is the second hall. You can see what it looks like. Uh, it's neatly done and properly cleaned out. So we have a barricade here so that beds from here don't move over to the other one. And the same thing is done over there. So 
we make sure that it is altered here so everything here remains on this part so that's the second part or the third part the brooding unit is one this is the second and that's the third so it has been designed adequately for us to have different stages and ages of birds once we get our layers pulled off from this place and they are in the cages we can have three different sets of birds broilers one set there one here one here so we'll just bring what is sufficient for each of the units so we don't have to do spreading around so those ones will be two weeks older than this this will be two weeks older than that so while we are selling this off this is getting ready while we are selling this off this is getting ready so by the time we're selling the last set off the other first set has been stuck and it's almost getting ready so that's the plan for the production cycle so this is the second uh, uh, compartment and there you have the third compartment. We'll just walk you through. All right. So this is the entrance. You can see we have done the foot deep here, but because there's no animals in here we've not they've not even cleaned out this part uh, so i'll ask the boys to get it cleaned out and uh, get it set so when we spread those ones down here they can all go in so lastly we're going to show you the layer structure just from the entrance we'll show you the parts and then we'll call it a day this is the entrance to the layer unit I remember all these structures are built to the east-west orientation so we can use maximum we can have maximum use of sunlight okay so um sorry this is our fish feed that we just brought in so this is a view of it we have a two meter space between the door and the point where you have the cages so you can have your walkway here do whatever you want to do go to whichever part you want to go we we'll have a feed up tank here you can see the tank for the birds for the layers and the broilers so we'll have another feeder tank here where we'll have our filter for the water that's going to come into the cages must be of high quality so we'll have a feeder tank with filter attached to it then we'll bring in the cages we have three rows of cages one two three so on each of these rows, you can pick your eggs and do your feeding. And in each of these rows, here too, you can pick your eggs from either this or this and do your feeding. And from the other side, on that airstream. So that's how we've designed it. We have our electricity bulbs all set in. So we just have a little finishing to do at the airstream end with the manual scraper and the manual dryer to come in and this place will be ready. So definitely, if you're still with us, subscribe. And when these videos have been uploaded of the installation of the cages and the uh, process of installing the manual dryer and scraper, we're still gonna upload those. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do well to click on that subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you get a notification when we upload these videos uh, for you to see. So it's been a great time with you. Uh, of course, we appreciate each and every one of you for following us through. And uh, we say thank you. Of course, the number is displayed on the screen. Uh, try as much as possible to give us a call. 08068525032. That's the number. So you can give us a call directly on our phone number or you can drop a message for us on WhatsApp through that same number. In case you call, you're not able to reach us, drop a message on WhatsApp and we would always respond accordingly. So thank you. God bless you and bye bye.